Hello, hello. All right. It's been a while, so we can excuse a little bit of offness to my streaming abilities, right? Welcome back. I'm here. I'm alive. Uh, it's been a very busy summer. Um, last month and a half, especially, we've had uh, lots of family stuff going on, lots of just travel and things. And then there was also the Dallas Vault Tour, which I got to go to. Um, and lots of other events happening on Saturdays, which I would is when I would normally stream, and I didn't really want to try and stream over uh, things like the um, Canadian Nationals and stuff, other things that were getting streamed, uh, Vegas Vault Tour, like everyone was going to be watching those anyways, as they should have been. <laughs> so I haven't been on for like a month and a half, but I do have some really exciting stuff on the way, including a YouTube series that... I'm not gonna promise too much until I've started actually doing the editing work, but I've been doing recording for, uh, and it's gonna be, I hope long-term to be a actual strategy series, um, because that's a big thing I'm seeing on a lot of discords, just a lot of new players. It's just, it's hard to do for this game. And I totally agree with that. It's really, really tough. Um, it's tough to make content for because you don't have deck guides because if you do a guide for your deck, no one else owns that deck. So that deck guide doesn't help anyone. Um, but we're just gonna start with the basics of the timing chart. And I think it's gonna be really fun. I enjoyed uh, enjoyed what I've done so far, just recording it and stuff, I really like it. So hopefully that makes it easier to kind of do all of it and go through that. Um, so be on the lookout for that on YouTube, but otherwise hoping to just get back into swing of doing some of these Saturday streams and uh, keeping up with that. So without further, do i think we're gonna get to do a kagi game here uh storm strong is in my pod and they were asking if anyone was around so i'm gonna see if they're ready to go that means i need to decide on a deck uh so i've done one <clears throat> done one kagi game so far with uh, quick draw and I did lose 2-0 which was unfortunate they were both fairly close well second game was really close first game I don't remember exactly what happened it, there was there was some uh, like five card early untamed burst things happening so um, let's see what I've got in here played Arik in that one, which I think is going to be kind of my new adaptive. I really like it for the format. Um, not 100% sure if that's what I want to do this time. Game up, but I don't have any more time to fix it, so I think we're just going to go with it and see. I think my fear is it's maybe... Oops. Just a little bit. Um, okay. Trying to get this going. It's a little bit not necessarily strong enough. I think kind of having that first game win is a really big deal. I don't know if this quite gets us there. Uh, let's see, we've got mind this is there a bounce no so i think we got a lot we can do here uh we're gonna keep this logos hand do not mind at all starting with daughter and just getting a lot of cards out okay um I think there are a lot of tricky things in this deck. Book of IEQ or LEQ is one of them. Self-bolstering is another, just figuring out the way it actually works if people are kind of expecting it to get more power or whatever, or even just kind of stacking it up with um, upgrades or whatever when it's not really a huge part of the game uh, or part of this deck's strategy. Okay, so decent burst there. Just six Semper. Do I hold Axiom against this though? Let's 
Let's do Star Alliance. Let's get this down now that the Hawk is gone, because there's only one Hawk. I'm gonna put the Cloaking Dongle here. Go ahead and put this on the left. So, like, I even could put the Skirmish on there, but it's just... It's very rare that this actually gets above one power, at least in this deck. Which I probably just on some discords that were live, so... Okay, so we got a Logos turn, doing some Tau Taus. Twin Bolt to kill the daughter, so I maybe could have warded there instead, but I'm not super worried about it. Uh, don't mind this Saurian turn. So we're going to do it this way. We're going to Gargantodon library we'll go ahead and stomp to kill the selwyn it's all there and we'll how much steel do they do almost none so yeah we'll go ahead and just six up for this um because i do have some steel that i want to keep an eye out for and we are going to hold the axiom for another turn um i want to be careful of the untamed what it can do back into shadow so we might see a kind more here or maybe just some efficiency hit and run to strip a ward hidden stash so yeah probably going logos here we might get hit by unnatural selection but go star alliance i don't have a good book play right now though so we'll just go logos and start tucking some things they do have the sania still so Gonna reap here we're actually going to hit our own uh explo rover so that that uh unnatural selection doesn't hit us and we're just going to put the axiom in there because i don't really care too much if we lose that to disania i should have copied my link it's on here not not been on for a while too long since i last streamed but again, hoping I'm going to be back. Okay, so Tao Tao and Igor. Question is, is there like a big thing this deck is playing into? It doesn't have hardly any uh, amber control, right? There's the Eddie. Yancy Gang needs to be on the board. And the Mustic Mermook. So I that'll be something I need to be careful of on my turns as well. So that's seven. Still got the archives. I think we're fine just kind of forcing them to deal with what we are doing right now. I put the discombobulator on here. Just Axiom or let them kill one of them with the unnatural. Discombobulator. I don't even necessarily need to kill the Eddie here. I might as well. I guess I can stop the key too if I want to get really greedy. They don't have. Outside of the unnatural selection, I don't think they have a ton of great answers. And I think we are just going to discard these to really force the issue on that. So we can get some wards down like this. And then we can actually pull the archives to Axiom here, depending on what comes down. Too many things I'm trying to do at once, so get these posted and get back in the game. Ooh, Kaimor. I did forget about the Kaimor. That hits the Eddie too. We're glad to see that gone. And we do have the Star Alliance to kind of go back into. I really don't like this for book though, so I think we're just gonna skip that. Uh Eddie gets us a chant, but the chant doesn't really do anything. It's a bummer. Or sorry, Kirby. Axioming doesn't really help us at all. I think 
we're gonna put that on him just so that they can't fight it off with their own uh, and it survives Mustic Mermook. And we don't really have much capture coming anymore, so I think we're just going to play this to try and go and check. Luckily, Amber Meaty's just posted today, so all of my Discord channels. <laughs> Uh, that page already highlighted. Oh, what's up, Ultima Fox? Hey, sorry, I saw somebody trashing you on the TCO thing. I, it's probably all the same person. They've been on there for a while doing stuff, but I'm going to go on there after this game and heartily disagree with them. You're a great player to play against. Okay, uh, so we're not forging. We did lose the Axiom, which is sad. Why are we not forging? What did I miss? Worm holding into the Dissania. Oh, they have five cards in archives. When did that happen? All the hidden stashes. Okay, uh, that's a bummer. Uh, I think we just go back into Star Alliance here. Oh, really? Okay. Because I know there's the other player, like right above all those posts, there's the other player kind of who is kind of a known troll, I guess. Uh, has been called out at least so i wasn't sure if that was it was that person trying to kind of you know just throw the discord in to the chat but uh we could go i really don't want a book again i don't need attacks i don't need to use the sarian so we're just gonna go star lines again we'll go ahead and throw this on garcia i don't have like a graft or anything right Reap. Now we can do threes and twos. Now that I actually remember which card that is. Uh, we don't get anything off the Kirby. And again, we're just going to keep tossing creatures. So we don't get hit by the unnatural, which I'm sure is coming at this point now. Because they've been archiving basically only untamed. Cool. Well, I'm glad. Maybe that's why there wasn't as much blowback to it, but anyways, hope you're doing well. Not sure if you've gotten much. Are we in the same pod? I have not kept up with the Kagi pod. I need to... Are we in the same pod this season? Uh... No. I don't think so. But I'm in one of the bigger pods, because there's like two pods of, or maybe only one pod of seven all the rest have six and already having lost two out a quick draw i'm kind of in trouble uh let's see what do they do here can they key charge no one is gonna get them a little bit but i rocked garcia i guess if they do mermook mermook kill the garcia but it's already a persistent effect i don't think they can get there Unnatural, I don't know what they hit here. Maybe their own, oh, Flaxia, and then they can regrowth it. Yeah, this is gonna be a big burst, so I gotta watch for this when I'm playing their deck. I mean, I haven't made top cut yet, but I would love if I made it this time. Uh, let's see, they're at nine, current cost is eight, they're at 11, good night. Do they key charge though? Uh, I don't think there's much worth mimicrying. What they mimicry? Oh, they couldn't steal because of the discombobulator. I wonder if they caught that. Okay, uh, we are in a little bit of trouble here, but they did not key charge, which means they're probably setting up to key charge this turn. All right, we haven't seen key charge go yet. The problem is they're gonna be able to reap anyways so i could stealth mode so let's see what does that get me i can do don't forge past the mermook or do i because i can do one two three four 
they did not redraw into Eddie, they wouldn't be able to key charge. Oh, I think I'm doing that math right. What else could they have? No Yancey gang. I am definitely getting to four because one, two, three, four. So I get to seven. Key cost is seven. Can't fight. That's good to know. And how much star lines do I have left? Maybe I can actually play the Saurian anyways. Yeah, so we'll just book and play Saurian if we can anyways. Just for good measure. Uh, probably should have put that over here, but it's fine. Just gonna make him a giant, gonna stealth mode. And we do play into sorry in anyways. So we'll also increase their key cost and then word the redder. Five six Kirby is mean. I'm a, I'm a fan. <laughs> uh, I wish if this deck had a transporter platform, it would be so solid. Okay, well, we took game one. Uh, yes, we would like the rematch. Okay. I know, that's the love of Keyforge. Gotta figure out how to make a play regardless. Uh, dang. I gotta think about this deck. So he's probably gonna do the same thing since he saw me doing it, playing around the unnatural. I don't know if I want that this early. Don't mind this start though, because that seismo could really slow them down while I'm setting stuff up. Oh, it seems a little bit greedy. We'll, we'll mulligan it. Okay, I'm fine with that. Unless this plays the. Mm, let's do this first. Twin Bolt doesn't kill many of my dudes, so it's not super valuable here. What could I Wild Wormhole into? Uh, if we hit the Kaimor, we'd want this guy out. Okay, we got a second Eddy. Fantastic. Or am I discarding? I should probably be watching that. Okay. Uh, Feathered Shaman, Beyonce Gang. String Blow? I think we actually want... I like Yancey Gang. Okay. Are there any good hit and run targets in this? It's probably just an Igor back to hand. The Shadows is super weird. Yeah, we either bump Igor or the Mermook. Probably the Mermook just because I am yeah, going to be low on creature control. I need to kind of force the issue on some of those. Uh, I do need to remember that this is one of my only creature... Er, uh, Amber control cards. Geek Bloom stops him, stops him from force fielding here. I can bounce Igor back, prepping for the next turn. Now let's go Shadows. Um, so Inky Gloom, we're gonna damage here because Nurse Soto can heal him, and then we'll bounce the Icord back for Logos next turn. It's fun playing with these World Collide decks, I feel like you just don't, we just don't play these decks anymore, like there's so few of them, especially like the mid-rangey ones, but I love them, like I love Arc. it's such a fun deck, uh, and it definitely does better than you'd expect sometimes. Logos hurts though. Good night. Okay, so this might be more of a untamed turn. Uh, so it's 
Arik the Intrinsically Extravagant is my deck. And then, oh, sorry, my name, my, my face is in front of it, isn't that? There you go, Arik the Intrinsically Extravagant. And then I'll get theirs in a sec, let me do this turn. Uh, So I could fight the Mermook here and then bring it back to kill the Eddie or the daughter. Seems like kind of a waste of turn. Let's just do Logos for now. See what we find. Archive the key charge for sure. I think we just fight this Soto before it starts warding. Oof. I do have a card archive, but getting rid of both of these feels really bad. Uh, is the Sania worth hitting one? So discard. No, because I can Mimicry that. Uh, I think Mimicry has to be the call here. I don't have another way of getting it back, right? Uh, and then we'll Archive. Shoot, I kind of wish I had an Archive this now. Maybe we can actually key charge next turn, depending on what we mimicry. So maybe it's fine to bring it all back. It's, it's very fun. It definitely, like, it plays really strangely. Like this, and this is why I like it for adaptive. Like the Saurian does not use the Six Emperor, like at all. It doesn't hardly use Library Polysaurus. Like it doesn't do Capture or Exalting hardly at all. So there's kind of just these weird, like, ancillary cards in there that you're like, should I actually be playing towards this or nah? All right, what is happening? It's bad news. That is why we're going to mimicry the flux because this isn't warded. Yeah, like Chant of Hubris, like most of the time doesn't do anything, but the one place, oh, that Imperium sucks. Uh, the one place it can do a lot is, um, good night. If you can get the candle unit warded. Okay, uh, what do I do here? This is bad. I can't kill that flop, the Flophosaurus, can I? Hmm. We just fish for a little bit more untamed control, see what we can find. Shadows for now and just keep stuffing. There's none of the steel hate out yet. Okay, that was not untamed control <laughs> uh i don't mind seeing kaimor i probably could have put this board together a little bit better for the kaimor but yeah this this board is a problem He was so hit and miss with that too because dt i feel like didn't actually do a ton of exalting um or it was very like conditional like on what is it vendor ultim or whatever like if, if the tide is low and its armor gets hit then it or it gets damaged then it exalts or something like it's really weird there's more capture or some capture at least with like reach advantage but uh okay so storm strong's deck is fair hand the unnerving Face again. If you want to look that one up too. Um, definitely a cool looking deck. I love the logos. Triple I Gore, Double Tau Tau, Eddie Desania. Liking all that. Okay, so they go into the 
Zarian, which makes sense, especially since we ditched the Desania. They're going to get so much value from that Flophosaurus. Oh! Playing the Axiom for me, I... They're going to get a lot of draw because of the Titan Guardian. I guess they get to keep a little bit more alive, but that makes my... Oh, I mean, that gives me another option for the... Uh... Mimicry 2. So let's see, we've got a 3, 2, 4, 3. So Axiom is probably better. Is that right? Because I can... Let's see. Yeah, because I don't have another creature to hit with the Quintrino to hit two different, so... Yeah, 3 Igor. I have an AOA. That's 3 Igor with double Hysteria, double Exhum. That is literally all the deck does, is play those cards. But... Uh, let's see, can I... Forge. Why am I at eight? Just because of Eddie. Okay, so we're gonna go on team. We're just gonna do this now. So in that case, do I regrowth a Mermook? Or do I regrowth something else? Do this. We'll go ahead and mimicry. Axiom. That stays on the board. That's fine. Because we can hit it with the Mermook now. Regrowth. Mermook. I guess we have a second regrowth. Hog Bank. Regrowth four. What are we looking for? Still have Untamed coming. And more Logos. I kind of feel like Igor is what we're going to be wanting next turn. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just get this key, because we're going to cycle pretty soon here. Host Pixie pretty much does nothing in this matchup. Like, their deck is almost exclusively... Or my deck, I guess, is almost exclusively taxing. What's up, Fudgenator? I am glad to be back. It's been too long. It's been a good summer, except for NKFL was just brutal. Um... Dallas VT was fantastic. I kept, I actually recorded two different, uh, like summaries of the Dallas VT and both of them had major technical issues. So I ended up not doing that, but saying earlier, I am recording some other stuff that is just going to be YouTube specific that I'm really excited about. I'm hoping to actually do some strategy type stuff just to kind of help out new players. Okay, so we've got Discombobulator. Um, get a third? What's a third? Did I miss something? So they're gonna get this key. I can keep it at seven if I just go Logos. Save the Kymore or I could Kymore. Third VT coverage video. I mean, this would just be my, like, who else did cover, uh, I, it'd just be like a summary of what, how my experience was at Dallas VT. Uh, I don't like this Logos, or this, let's get, just get mine going. Okay, so we're going to do this guy on the left. Definitely gonna take the unnatural this time. This guy on the right. Okay, nothing crazy. Um, I am not a hundred percent decided yet on worlds. I would really like to. It kind of just figuring out the logistics and money side of it. Um, I think my wife would like me to sell another deck or two before buying the plane tickets but plane tickets aren't looking too crazy for me right now so there's a decent chance um and if i did i'd probably be talking to like zach or whoever is doing some of the ttr stuff to try and at least get on help out a little bit but we'll see first i need to get first i need to be going and i'll talk to him about that stuff have you uh, gotten your tickets yet or be it's good playing into the unnatural now, but we don't have any more untamed coming yet, which is unfortunate. Feeling good about Kaimor. 
I wish I had one more untamed creature to play so I wasn't Kaimoring my daughter. I guess I play the Simon and just Kaimor that, but it doesn't feel super great. Uh, I also need to be gaining Amber, which is not really happening. Tuck that. I go ahead and play Simon so I can draw through. I'm gonna inky gloom to stop any reaping. And then I don't love shuffling back the Kirby, but getting rid of all those upgrades at least helps. Now we draw through, so these Igors are doing a lot more again. But figuring out how this deck is gonna gain Amber is gonna be tricky. It, so much of it is in the Untamed. The Shadows is very awkward, but. Could cycle back into Hawk now. Oh yeah, is that a... I need to go back and watch the Canadian Nationals again. I watched, I got a good chunk of it. Um, I know JDG got a World's Invite. Was there another? Who's the other Canadian that got in? Because, who was it? Uh, June was one of the other top two. Oof, no actions. Okay, so still no check because of the Murmook. This seems like a pretty good Logos turn. Ditching the Tao Tao doesn't feel great, but... Um, can't deal with this yet, so... Stop Logos from reaping. I'm going to go ahead and give them... Robot, okay. We'll give them one card. Um... I really like the Hawk. I want to get rid of that Imperial Road because that's actually pretty good. Twin Bolt or Fog Igor. Can't play Twin Bolt, so let's just do another Igor. Uh, Hidden Stash feels pretty good for next turn. Goodness, where's my Amber? <laughs> yeah, I know there wasn't top eight, but I also know that Sheep won both, which is kind of ridiculous. It's hilarious, but also <laughs> just ridiculous um but glad there's some canadians coming that'll be fun now there's a lot of people trying to like sell decks to fund uh fund their trips which is just tough when there's a lot of other people who are doing the same thing so it's like i'm not gonna buy your deck if i'm also trying to do that same thing Oof. Maxium. Here's the book. Goes to eight. Stuns. Uh, there was a stealth mode, Ultimo, so I, I couldn't play it, which is also why I didn't take the. Um... Okay. Jargago had the book under it. Uh, also why I didn't take the Twin Bolt. Okay, so they're getting this key, which makes me sad, but um, we should be setting up a pretty solid Untamed coming up here. And we do get to check this turn too. Uh, we'll go ahead and Enrage the Candle unit, just so they also can't action, because uh, they do start getting value. Do I want to give them the book? I think Imperial Road is huge because that lets them play uh, Redder out of turn, and that is a huge thing for that deck to be able to take an off turn and still get uh, Amber Control down. There's no ways of stacking the book, so it's really just gambles of when it's worth it based on like draw and discard, which is another reason why I like it for adaptive. Like it's it's a good good adaptive deck, I think. Um, so if they don't kill Simon, I'm bouncing the Candle Unit. I might go Shadows anyways, just because Candle Unit doesn't stop the Anti-Gang. And we've got the Mimicry again, so we could Axiom, which might actually make sense now that Garcia's down. I 
And then we ward the Yancey. Actually be an interesting turn. I don't know how much of this I should do. Because I don't have the key cheat. Wait, key cheat is... Oh, I do have the key cheat. Uh, but I'm not forging this turn unless I use the key cheat. And I don't want to forge at 8. That's kind of a waste. So I probably just don't pull archives here. Can I mimicry something else? Semper doesn't help me, Stomp doesn't really help me, so it would have to be the Axiom if I want to clear their board. But then I don't get the Harmonia value. Maybe that's fine. Can't leave this board for another turn though, I don't think. So maybe I hold Harmonia. Or bring back. Don't want to bring back the Mustic either. I guess I could get the value off Harmonia here, Axiom, and then regrowth the Harmonia. Problem is regrowthing, I do have one more regrowth coming. Regrowthing Murmook is going to be one of my only Amber control outs outside of Yanti Gang. Let's do that. I might as well push him here because Redder and Eddie are still coming. Then they also have the... Play this then they're gonna tax me with redder yeah i think so we'll just see if they have it bummer if they do but argantadon and discombobulator are gone so shadows yanti gang is active for some amber control if they don't kill it uh quintrino warp kills it they just did Star Alliance, and they're on a five card hand, so I think we're looking okay. <laughs> uh, if this goes to game three, it's going to be really tricky to bid keys. These decks both have, both. I, I think both these decks are pretty well matched. Like, it's a good game. I like this. This is good stuff happening. Uh, they really have to question if they're going to play more creatures, though, without Harmonia down. Because I can even... Use Yancy Gang, bounce it, and then play it for more value. Uh, archiving the Eddy doesn't feel great, but at this point, I probably just do it to try and get the rest of this untamed. Because if I get these two, we have a really good ch chance of key cheating. Yeah, and that's why I like that's one of the reasons why I wanted to play Arc this season is like I've been doing so much, well, so much wins of exchange, but also just a lot of uh aoa and mass mutation i feel like are the sets that i play the most even just like nkfl and stuff and there's some really fun stuff in worlds collide it's very awkward like very matchup dependent kind of stuff like both of these decks probably have pretty bad matchups uh but in a game like this it's just fun i was back into starline so that's probably quintrino warp Oh, just some tips. And then the book into Sarian. No! Oh, but they don't have... They don't have the redder. Okay. So. Problem is, I cannot kill this unless I hit and run. Like, do I get to check here? played one creature 
This lets them fish for redder, which makes the Kichi really tough. Two off of Kichi Ding. Ugh. I'm not getting to check anyways. Maybe the play is just to kill this. And go to like... What does that put me at? Just four. And just get all the cycle. Because I, would, I wouldn't draw... I'd be one off. So I'm not drawing everything. Uh... So this is going down for sure. Hit and run's not doing anything else for me, so we're just gonna do two damage and bounce. They don't have a key cheat. Again, I'm not getting in check. They probably have a decent sorry in turn coming, so I think I have to fight this. And luckily plasma nozzle just kills it outright. Oh, I hope that wasn't a greedy play. Because now the question is if they play red or not. But if they go back into Saurian, maybe they just don't go to check. Okay. Uh, we got our Untamed. Have the regrowth so we can get back. Getting back Mermook is so tough. So it gives us plus one key cost but it also lets me kill one of their creatures if they can kill mine and i can't activate flaxia dt pretty good set i like that fox <laughs> that is what i would say it's pretty cool i wouldn't call it the best <laughs> favorite set is hard um i've played so much aoa that it's just hard not to say there's just so much fun in that set Okay, uh, I think through. So we got Flaxia for two, puts us to six. Then we unnatural, build a Flaxia, play Flaxia again for two, puts us to nine. Yeah, I think we got it. Flaxia. Reap. Unnatural. I don't have to go through the whole thing. Oh. Good games, man. Oh, I'll take that. After... Yeah. Yeah, no, you definitely should watch. I think... That was very close to two. I think, like I said, that would have been so hard. Uh, game three to do the um, uh, to do the chain bidding. I'm glad it didn't come to that. I think being able to cheat that first key and then recycle was pretty huge. Um, and if they were on check that turn, it would have been a completely different story, right? Uh, so I would have had to do, what would I even have done? I would have had to use Yancey to steal one, and then they could use the Falophosaurus to find Redder or whatever. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely a good one. Okay, let's go take a look at their deck quick. Um, so I have to put this in the form. So here's mine. There's is. Fair hand the unnerving. It's probably a little ways down. Does unnerving have two or one? Spell that right? There we go. Okay, pretty close on Sass too. Yeah, I'll I'll don't worry, Fudge. I'll report. 
Uh, let's see. There's the match report. So many documents. Okay, so that also gets me uh, back up in line with a uh, quick draw who beat me. Um, totally understand that too, Storm Strong. My dog will probably be in here in 20 minutes begging me to go out. So, I love both of these decks. Like, I love his deck. The, the Untamed buildup in Worlds Collide is just one of those things you don't see very often, but it's so good in Worlds Collide because of the archiving and everything. The Shadows, I think, is tricky like Kaimor playing your cards in the right position for Kaimor and stuff is hard mimicry is just one of those that like such a great utility card but i'm a fan okay uh winner's deck was worlds collide it is 72 winner's deck also worlds collide and 70 Love it. Cool. I'm glad we got to do that on stream. Um, I hadn't really planned to stream all my Kagi matches. I obviously missed my uh, one with Quick Draw already. GG Storm Strong. That was really fun. Like, me winning a side, which is winning always feels good. But, like, I love both of these decks. I think it was really, really fun games. I'm trying to think if there was anything that was, like, crazy lucky or unlucky on either side. Um, I got enough untamed early in the second game to get that first key cheated. I think if I don't do that, then I'm stuck getting, I have to pay a lot more for one of my keys, I think is what happens. But the fact that I got that at a lower key cost um, was really, really huge for the tempo of the game. The turn where you axiomed your own board, I'm trying to think. I would have had to let you use that board for a turn before I could answer it. So I understand why you did it because I also had some interesting stuff on board. Uh, but I think with the information you had, it's hard to know, but with the information I had, you hitting your big board and like removing all those wards probably helped me more than you in the long run because I was able to mimicry that uh, axiom and remove the rest of them. So that, that was a very tough call. Um, based on the board state then but i think that would be kind of the one the one thing at least in game two aside from me being able to cheat that first key um which i think was a really big deal being able to cheat that even though i kind of discarded i lost some good cards on those first igors um but that that first key was huge and then game one i think you just didn't see the burst until later like flaxia flaxia was pretty late uh game one or it was just archived for a while and it's hard to know if you should pull that or not because i was playing game one i was playing around the unnatural like the whole game um which is good if i don't want to lose creatures but bad if i don't want you to play flaxia so that flaxia could have done a lot more in game one if you'd have found it sooner so it's tough but i like your deck a lot it's <laughs> it's very fun i love the untamed 